The year is 1890. America's Gilded Age. Copper King W.E.C. Eustace and his family are living in this beautiful mansion in Milton. Historic New England has maintained this home for years, but now they're traveling back in time to uncover long overlooked stories. Research fellow Nora Martinez Proctor. I wanted to kind of uncover who else was here and what were they doing and what did they want from their lives beyond their jobs here at the Eustace Estate. Her work uncovered a black family, the Chestnuts. Two generations worked at the estate, both men named David. The first David Chestnut was likely born into enslavement, came north in the late 19th century and came here to the Eustace Estate where he worked with horses. His family was here with him and when he died after several years, his son, the second David Chestnut, took over his work. Martinez Proctor also explored the younger David's home life in Dedham, discovering his love of music. He filled his house with music and wound up raising two musical sons who became jazz musicians themselves in Boston's kind of golden jazz era. When Martinez Proctor connected with David's granddaughter, Maria Lisa Chestnut Corman, the strength of this local family's legacy was clear. I actually grew up with him. We moved into his house when I was five years old. So I remember him, you know, he loved his John Philip Sousa's marches and they would like boom through the house. The Eustace Estate recently celebrated the Chestnut family's connections to the home with a jazz festival named in their honor. Maria Lisa collaborated with the estate for the festival and for an exhibit about her family. I was surprised, I was shocked, because most families that work in these big homes, it, to tell their story is rare. And I couldn't believe that a museum was actually telling a story from the other side. The music hasn't stopped for David Chestnut's descendants. Maria Lisa played clarinet and organ, and her son Matt Corman is an independent hip-hop artist. Beyond the exhibit about the Chestnut family, the Eustace Estate has developed a new tour from the perspective of those who once worked here. We kind of walk in their footsteps, we enter the house through the service drive on the side, we go up the back stairs, we talk about not just the work that they did here, but also their lives beyond that. It's really rewarding to kind of see everyone get to see themselves reflected. 1939 was the destination for our next time traveler who was hunting for information about this painting. At a museum, we're always trying to work backwards, right? We know where we got a work of art, so what we're trying to figure out is where it was before that and then before that. Victoria Reed digs into the past every day in her work as senior curator for provenance at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Sometimes art can talk. I have likened the back of a painting sort of to its passport. You can often see labels, inventory numbers, that kind of thing on the back of a painting, and that can help guide the research process. For a recent high-profile case, Reed untangled the history of this piece, Customers Conversing in a Tavern, created by Adrian Van Ostada. She traced how it passed from a Jewish art dealer in 1939 Paris to the Nazis, then to the French government, and eventually to the open art market. When a local couple pledged the painting to the MFA, Reed researched its background. In 2023, the museum reached a settlement with the heirs of the art dealer. It was actually their idea to have the label on the wall discussing the Nazi era history of the painting, which I think is great. So as long as it's on view here, it will have a label discussing this story. Reed says some pieces are more difficult to trace than others. She pointed to a piece in the museum's Dutch galleries where essential information about the artist's identity had been lost. As it turns out, this is a signed painting, but the signature had been painted over when it was on the art market. So nobody knew it was by Adrian Brower. Because of that missing information, Reed had less to go on to determine its provenance. 
things that are easier to trace tend to be those things that people have valued over time. For example, a signed and dated painting by a well-known artist like Rembrandt. That is just, by its very nature, going to have more of a paper trail. In her role, Reed researches and documents the history of every piece in the MFA's collection, all 500,000, and anything new that comes in, and just as important as the information, has been the MFA's decision to share it. What's really important too is that we get this information online so that if someone's looking for it, they have a means of finding it. And back to Milton and Historic New England's efforts to uncover overlooked stories, not just limited, obviously, to the use of the state. Yeah, the initiative called uh, Recovering New England Voices conducts research on all of the people that lived on or near the organization's property, including indigenous people, people of color, and the LGBTQ plus community. Well, they do a deep dive. That's great. Coming up, back to the future on foot.